time for something green. Hi everybody and welcome back to Plastic Models by a Regular Dude. In part one, the intro to my next project, the Academy 135th scale M50A1 Ontos. So this here kit is another one of the kits that uh, Keith, my buddy Keith, gave to me recently. And since I've built quite a few German vehicles of late, I think it's about time I did something in green. So I decided to do this one, um, which is the Academy 135th scale uh, US Marine Corps M50A1 Ontos. All right, this kit is Academy kit number 13218. And it was new tool in 2010 by Academy. And that is the only entry for this particular kit in scale mates so that's pretty easy fairly new kit well let's say modern kit and uh, yeah it's the only one so this is the original boxing of it so let's take a look at the outside of the box all right so you have this nice cover art here painting two figures um, U.S. Marine Corps M50A1 Ontos, accurately reproduced U.S. Marine Corps M50A1 Ontos, whole body figures of two pieces included, photo etch parts included, light guard, muffler, mesh, etc. So that's the cover. The ends of the boxes, basically the same thing. Um, another uh, illustration of the painting and then the actual model kit itself. Then on the side here we have the actual model all the language stuff going on there for the different languages the other end same thing this side here more photos of the actual kit so uh yeah pretty basic box figure sculpted by mr c rang kim right there so let's see yeah that's pretty much it for the box uh now i've already taken the contents out so i will uh Bring those out on the table and we'll take a look at the stuff that comes inside first we got some paper goods uh, typical academy stuff it's got a guideline for beginners with what tools you should use etc um, how to apply the decals recommendations for cement and tools and that kind of thing then we have this uh, warning an assembly of model kits uh, i'm assuming this is korean and english and then we have, uh, looks like French, German, uh, Japanese, and Chinese, I'm assuming. Then we have the marking uh, options. And on this side, we have painting and decal placement. Um, body color four, which we'll look at in a minute. I'm sure it's on the instructions. Um, then it shows the accessories, how to assemble those. Nice side profile, upper, front and back, front and back. Pretty interesting looking vehicle. And on the back shows uh, how to paint the fit or what colors to use to paint the figures and the um, ammunition. Then we have more uh, instructions here on how to bend and place the photo etch and then we have the instructions i'm not going to go too much into this but it's nice it's a well it's one of them fold out jobs but that's okay usual thing going on here um starting with the lower hull just typical typical armor sequence lower hull including the suspension and wheels. Uh, then you move on to the upper hull parts. Then you get into some of the uh, hull details and then into the armament itself. And the tracks. 
So that's the paper stuff. Um, all the parts come in um, plastic bags. So let me get these cut out and then I'll go over them one by one briefly. All right, so first we have sprue A, which is the upper and lower hole. All nice one piece upper, one piece lower. Molding looks really good, no flash. Detail looks really nice. Raised bolt detail there. A little bit of texture on there. Nice weld seams all the way around. Not much to say there, it all looks good. That is sprue A. Sprue B, lots and lots of parts. We've got suspension components, hatches, uh, fuel can, grills, very fine detail. There's something that's broken there pretty small but should be easy to get glued back together I'll do that once I cut it off but uh, very fine detail no flash seam lines mold seam lines can't really see much uh, we got the figures down here, and they actually look pretty good. A little bit of mold seam line to clean up, but I'll, I'll be using the figures for this one. Well, that's kind of unusual. The boots are separate from the from the main body part there. That's weird. Facial expressions are kind of unique. Yeah, looks looks good. Uh, there are ejector pin marks, but they are on the interior surfaces. I mean, if you had hatches posed open or whatever, they'd have to be cleaned up. But the nice thing is they are recessed. Well, I say it's nice. They're recessed, so they'd have to be filled and sanded. Which isn't too big of a deal. Personally, I prefer protruding ejector pin marks, but can't have everything in life now, can we? But it all looks pretty good. The uh, cleanup should be fairly easy. So that is sprue B. Then we have two sprue C, which is very common in uh, armor kits. Um, We've got the some of the road wheels, drive sprocket, what I'm assuming is the idler. Uh, lots of little stuff here. And then we've got the, okay, now that's nice. So these are the uh, the weapons. The uh, They're like recoilless rifles, anti-tank things. I'll have, to, I'll have to look into that. I'm not, real, I'm not familiar with this vehicle in particular and Vietnam vehicles in general. But I'll have to look that up. But anyway... They are one piece, they're slide molded, so the ends are hollow. Now they only go down so far, but still that's better than solid or having to glue two pieces together or glue, you know, a hollow tip on there. That, that sometimes doesn't work out so well. So the guns look pretty good. In comparison to real life, again, I don't know because I'm not real familiar with this stuff. But lots of small details, so I'm thinking this is going to be a pretty good one. Now, one nice thing is the road wheels, idlers, that kind of stuff. The sprue gates are on the edge of the wheel as opposed to being on the center line of the circumference of them. So, it'll just be a matter of cleaning that up and knocking the sharp edge down, which is a lot easier than cleaning center line uh, mold seam lines so that's kind of appreciated yeah but it looks good so there's two sprue C which has the wheels and weapon stuff on it we have sprue Z and Y now I'm sure this is uh, 
common to various vehicles because it's 50 caliber machine guns, two types, um, a 30 caliber, the associated mounts and um, ammo cans, cocking levers. Now this looks a lot like uh, I've bought in the past the Academy weapon sets. This is probably the same stuff that come that come in those, and the details really good on them. And it's nice because they are, like I mentioned earlier, this stuff is slide molded, so the holes are already in the uh, tips of the barrels, so you don't have to worry about drilling those out. And then we have some fuel cans and the and the handles that go with them. So yeah, that's just the basic uh, weapon stuff from Academy. Looks pretty good. Also, a nice touch. Um, you see them very, very common on uh, Tamiya kits are the poly caps or sleeves or whatever you want to call them for mounting the wheels. That makes it nice. You can get everything assembled, get everything in place. You can paint stuff, but you can take them off to help with weathering and stuff like that. So that's kind of cool. So we got those. Then we have the tracks. So now this is going to freak a lot of people out because they are one piece strip vinyl tracks you got some poor stubs here or whatever you want to call them they're easily trimmed off some good cutters but the detail is really nice on them Again, I'm not familiar with these vehicles, so I'm going to have to assume they're somewhat accurate. There's a lot of detail going on here that might not be too visible from that distance. Let's try this. But, uh, you know, it's the old school pins go through the holes and then you melt them in place kind of thing. So the only problem I see with these is going to be to get them to settle properly and uh, get some sag on them. So I may look and see if there's some aftermarket available, but I'm, I'm not sure there is. This is a pretty one-off vehicle, I think, but I'll look and see. If not, these should be perfectly serviceable. Um... I'm not thinking it would be a, a deal breaker. And the thing about these old pegs, when you poke them through and you heat them up and you smash them down and melt them in place, um, you can put that on the bottom to where they're not visible. So, and you know i was thinking about this the other day when i was working on another vehicle with aftermarket tracks back in the old days this is all we had what came in the kit and they were stripped and there are ways to make sag and there's ways to take care of all that kind of thing to make them a little bit better it just nowadays at least at least the details better on them and i can't really see any seam lines on the edges so that's good so anyway this should be fine they look good and they should do the trick. Next we have the photo etch, which is some uh, screens I'm imagining for the grills. A little screen there, some very tiny parts there. Uh, a lot of small stuff. Light guards. Man, that is ultra small right there. Let's see if you can see. That is some tiny stuff right there. So I'm going to have to be real careful for whatever that is. But it looks good. Should be okay. PE 135th M58-1 Academy. So anyway, that's the photo etch. Then we have the decals here, which look to be kind of messed up in the bag. So I may have to come up. Oh, yeah, those are coming off. <laughs> Yeah, look at that. They're totally coming off of here. So I'm going to have to do something else for markings. Which, you know, no big deal. Wouldn't be the first time. That's weird, though. They've totally come off of there. I don't know if moisture got in the box or what. Because there was some weird mold or something going on inside that box. So that's why I took it out of the box. 
and the box is going in the trash chop chop don't want any like alien bugs growing in my workspace here all right so that's the decals which i can't use no big deal all right so that's basically it that's the academy m50a1 ontos and 135th scale so this will be my next project as i say because i'm really looking forward to doing something green for a change the uh um ducal gelb is getting kind of wearing kind of thin right now although i do have some very interesting kits coming up in that color but for now we're going to work on this good old marine green whatever color that is i'll have to do a little bit of research see what colors i'm going to need and all that but talk about that when we actually get going on the project so that is it for now wins part number one the introduction to the academy 135th scale u.s marine corps m50 a1 on toast again thanks a lot um keith for hooking me up with this kit my supplier my dealer whatever you want to call him my enabler keith thanks um so this should be a fun kit i hope you stay tuned if you want to see more of this build hit the subscribe button you can see some of my other stuff as well if you have any uh experience with this kit i'd really like to hear about it because it looks like a really good kit so any info would be great so as always thanks for watching plastic models by a regular dude and until next time i will see you all later